thank you for doing this today, yeah. taking a chance to, to do this interview and um, talk about your son Liam. And, Thanks uh, for doing this project. Uh, you're welcome. It's very worthy. Um, and it's, uh, uh, you know about my project, that you're, all, you're also contributing to the Library of Congress, the Veterans History Project, through mm -hmm. the, um, the Gold Star Family Voices Act, where, where the uh, Library of Congress wants to take the stories of the family and have them on file in the National Archive. Mm -hmm. which, so that's what you're taking part in. Um, if you would state your name and then also your, your, uh, your hero's name. Sure. Uh, my name is, is William Richard Nevins, uh, Bill Nevins. And uh, my son's name uh, is Liam uh, Jules Nevins, known as Liam Nevins. Okay. Yeah. And oh, Liam was born in um, Middlebury, Vermont. We were living in Vermont at that time. And um, he um, was born on 9 of September uh, 11th uh, of 1981. Really, September 11th, huh? Yeah, I always, um, I always remember that because of the association, obviously. And uh, he had joined the military by the, the famous 9/11 of, of uh, 2001, mm -hmm. and so that was that was quite dramatic because he was in, uh, I think he was in Ranger training at that point, and uh, he phoned me and you know said a lot of wonderful things and phoned his mother too and said, you know, I may not see you because we're going to football war. So as far as he knew, there was a war breaking out all over the United States. Um, and he, he continued his training uh, and deployed uh, actually into Afghanistan pretty early on in 2003. So mm -hmm. he was among the, the early people going into Afghanistan. Wow. Not the first, but among the early ones. Yeah. Yeah. Two deployments to Afghanistan and Iraq in 2003, 2004, 2005. Mm -hmm. So he was actively in, in out and in combat in those times. Uh, sniper assignment most of the time. Uh, also a weapons specialist um, and and promoted to to sergeant, uh, ultimately staff sergeant. Um, but he in the 2000s, mid 2000s, left the army. Um, bought a house with some other guys, other vets, in uh, Denver and enrolled in college. Uh, later, so then the transition was that he was out of the Army for a while and then decided he would go back and join the Special Forces. He had heard a lot about it. And as I say, he had had this almost obsession with the Delta Force. That would be way into it, I suppose. And he discovered that you could join the Colorado National Guard and join the Special Forces. It was a way in. So he joined the Colorado National Guard. They were happy to have him. And so the the possibility of, I guess, that you apply, like applying for a deployment into Afghanistan came up. And it was a, a deployment training Afghan Rangers and Afghan mm -hmm. troops. Um, so he took it, and um, that's how he ended up over back in another mission out there. Uh, he was in the Pakhtia province. And then he sent me quite a few emails that are, actually I've preserved a lot of them. They're, they're pretty eloquent, telling me ups and downs of things. Like, And the worst for him was when he got into a, uh, a combat situation, uh, I guess in a village, uh, with his uh, special forces and his trainees, but they were combat Afghan, Afghans, you know. And um, they were ambushed. Um, later, he felt he said something like he thought there must have been some sort of infiltration because this was a nighttime move. So they were ambushed. And they, they knew they were there, and they took tremendous fire from heavy-duty fire from uh, organized opposition. Mm -hmm. uh, I suppose you can Taliban if you want, yeah. uh, whatever. But um, and um, he, uh, they, they, his guys were getting hit, and he got hit, and he got hit in the arm here, in the shoulder. I later saw a picture of it, and wow, it took like a huge chunk of flesh out. Okay, it didn't break the bone as far as I know, which was, was very lucky, but he was hit by probably a sniper round. And um, he then, um, and it, you know, he told me about it after the fact. I mean, I found out about it right after it happened because the Army 
sent notification to his relatives. And so yeah. we found out that way. But then he himself gave me his version only a few days later. Mm -hmm. Like, and his version was, uh, this was the worst thing ever happened to me, Dad, because my guys were under fire and I had to be taken out. And they, uh, they shot me up with ketamine to knock me out mm -hmm. so that I could be taken out because I wouldn't go. And he said, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to leave. I was going yep. to go down with them. Uh, his guy said, because at that point he was operating the radio, and he got on the radio and said their, uh, their, their slogan, like the special forces slogan. Mm -hmm. And he said, lower, lower the cannons, which apparently is one of their slogans. Like, like when you're being attacked, put them at point blank range. Yeah. You know, it's a slogan, you know, yep. like an order. But, uh, uh, but he said that. Uh, and he said, he just said, Liam, I, this is Liam, I'm hit, and uh, lower the cannons.